hey, listen, I get it. Not everyone has the time to walk down to LabCorp, Quest Labs, or, or even just go to the doctor and ask them to pull their blood work to look for vitamin D deficiencies. I totally get it. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, that's gonna be the best way that you can find out if you have a vitamin D deficiency, but there also are some things that you can understand about your own body that can be clear indicators that, hey, maybe you wanna take the next step towards getting some more vitamin D in your life, okay? So I totally get it, and that's why I'm doing this video. Now let's go ahead and break down exactly what's happening and why you might have these specific deficiencies. So everything that I'm gonna lay out here it's all a matter of not just having one symptom. You really wanna see if you have three or four of these symptoms all combined, then you might have an indicator that you're low in vitamin D. So let's go ahead and let's break it all down. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon. And then after this video, go ahead and check out Thrive Market. Thrive Market's an online grocery store. I do a lot of work with them. I've been able to create lots of specific grocery boxes with them. So uh, fasting boxes, thyroid boxes, hormone optimization uh, boxes, all kinds of things. Basically, I pick the groceries that I think are ideal for a given box and I create them with Thrive. So, Go ahead and check them out after you watch this video. You won't be disappointed. It's cool stuff. All right, so we have to know something really important first off. 42% of Americans are already deficient in vitamin D, and 77% have insufficient levels of vitamin D. So the reason that I say this is not to just shout a statistic, but it's to say the likelihood of you having a low level of vitamin D is actually pretty high. So I wanted to do this video so that there's legit awareness out there so that you can start taking matters into your own hands a little bit more. Here's the thing, the daily recommended allowance of vitamin D is only 600 IUs per day. In my opinion, I think that's kind of a joke. We need quite a bit more than that. Now, most doctors will even tell you that they want your blood levels to be quite a bit higher. If you were to go get some blood work done, if you're below 30 nanograms per deciliter, you're gonna show up as low vitamin D. I would generally recommend that most people be between 50 and 80 nanograms per deciliter. Some doctors even want you as high as 90 to 100. The point is, is we're drastically too low as a whole. So let's jump right into this. Number one thing that you should be paying attention to, are you depressed or are you quicker to trigger with anxiety? Like do you get anxiety coming into your life a lot faster and easier without any real just cause? Well, it very well could be a vitamin D thing. You see, it has to do with vitamin D and serotonin. It's actually two things, vitamin D and its effect on inflammation within our brain, which we'll talk a little bit more about inflammation in a minute, but more so, vitamin D is very, very imperative when it comes down to producing serotonin. That's why it's always been thought that if you go out in the sun, you feel better. Well, it's true. It's because the UVB light that we're getting converts, turns into this vitamin D that we ultimately need, and there you go, serotonin's produced, which is the feel-good neurotransmitter. Okay, there was a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, took a look at over 81,000 women, okay, and they found that of these women, if they were to give them 800 IUs per day in supplemental vitamin D, they had a 21% reduction in depression and anxiety symptoms. That is very profound, okay? So we already know the physiological link, but then when we have scientific literature with good statistics, with large studies, large amounts of people, 81,000 people, then we really know, okay, yes, there is a link there. So be paying very close attention to that. The next one that I wanna talk about is something very specific, and that's having a sweaty head. And I know you're laughing, like, what the heck, just a sweaty head? Okay, body sweats are indicative of overall like thermogenesis. It could mean a number of things. It could mean you have a fever, whatever. But a sweaty head, is more so linked to a vitamin D issue. Now, you may remember, if you've uh, ever had a kid, when your baby is in its first few months and you take him or her into the pediatrician, the pediatrician will often ask if your baby has had a sweaty head, or maybe it's on the questionnaire. Okay, I've got a two-year-old and I remember them asking that. I didn't really know why until I looked into it. Well, it has to do with the fact that vitamin D is a hormone signaling component, basically for the hypothalamus. So, the hypothalamus has vitamin D receptors, so if we're low in vitamin D, then it kind of messes up the signal with the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is like seeking out this vitamin D and it throws off its thermoregulatory process. So it starts generating, telling your body to generate more heat, but it manifests specifically on your head. So if you're like, why is my head sweating but the rest of my body isn't, and it's not even all that warm out? Well, that could very well be an indicator of low levels of vitamin D, especially if it's combined with depression and anxiety. And think about how they can compound each other, right? Sweaty head, you're confused why, so all of a sudden you get anxiety about it, and then the sweat piles on more. It's a vicious circle, right? Okay, leads me into the next thing to talk about, which is something a little bit vague, but I'll help you narrow it down. 
It's the world of pain and inflammation. Okay, inflammation is very broad, and I'm careful to talk about it because it can cause just about every chronic disease that's out there. So talking about increases in inflammation could be increase in just about every bad thing you could imagine. But when we think about pain, we think about just water retention, we think about getting sick and brain fog, we can kind of conceptualize what inflammation feels like. So here's what's wild. So there was a study that was published in the Journal of Immunology that did find that there was definitely a solid link between vitamin D and reducing levels of tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6. So if vitamin D was sufficient, we would have suppressed levels of these inflammatory cytokines that normally cause problems in the body. Okay, that's cool, and that's just some scientific literature, but what's going on further beyond that? Well, one thing that we do know is at the DNA level, there's some really amazing things going on with vitamin D. You see, we have this thing called the acetylation process. Now, what we have to look at is vitamin D triggers what's called histone 4 acetylation. Here's what it looks like, because it's all complicated, and if I just explain it in a simple sort of step-by-step -step process, it'll make sense. We have our DNA, which is tightly wound like a blueprint, right? And we have to unwind that DNA in order to actually express our genes and actually trigger a response for anything within our body. If our genetic library, if you want to call it that, has its doors locked all the time, we can never access the library books that we need to be able to actually rebuild our body properly. It turns out our DNA has vitamin D receptors on it too. So our DNA receives vitamin D, okay, via the receptor, and then once that receptor is activated, it goes inside the DNA, and it goes inside the DNA and triggers what's called the acetylation of histone 4 that causes it to unwind and therefore, we can now express genes specifically related to inflammation that allow the anti-inflammatory effects to occur. So basically, without vitamin D, our genetics are under lock and key and cannot get opened and we cannot combat excess inflammation, which means inflammation can run amok and we can get swollen, we can be in pain, our joints hurt, our brain's foggy, we don't feel like ourselves anymore. Okay, I know that's vague, but it's very important to talk about. And if you go and you do get lab work done and you see that your C-reactive protein levels are elevated, that's a clear indicator your inflammation's high. So the next step, okay, well maybe vitamin D is just a quick and easy fix that could help alleviate some of these issues. Anyhow, I get a little bit passionate there, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one that is also linked with inflammation, of course, and that is your immune system. Are you getting sick way more than you used to? Okay, almost, if not all, of your immune cells have vitamin D receptors on them, okay? Here's an, I, just an example of how impactful vitamin D is with our immune system. We have what are called T cells, which maybe you've heard of before. T cells are the cells that go out and they attack things, okay? T cells, they either uh, go around and they see something that's compromising the body, like a foreign invader, and they do one of two things. They either give it a tag and say, hey, this thing's bad, someone needs to take care of it, or they're a natural killer T cell that actually goes through and actually fights it itself. Well, without vitamin D, these T cells are just floating around aimlessly. You see, they send out a signal specifically looking for vitamin D. So our immune cells, they go out there and they say, vitamin D, where are you? Vitamin D, vitamin D, and they wait for vitamin D to shout back. And when vitamin D shouts back, that's how they can get the signal to turn into what they need to turn into. It's pretty wild stuff. So you can imagine without vitamin D, the T cells are like, hello, hello, hello. No one's getting back to them. So guess what? Your immune system is just eh, and you don't even know what to do, right? Because you're, you're just getting overrun with invaders. Now, there are so many studies that back this up, but there's one powerful quote from the Journal of Investigational Medicine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read this quote outright. There are a number of studies looking at vitamin D levels and rates of influenza as well as other infections even HIV, and all of them have reported an association with low levels of vitamin D and infection in the body. Powerful stuff. Virtually all of the studies out there looking at vitamin D and infections have shown that lower levels of vitamin D do directly line item equate with higher degrees of infections within the body. If you're getting sick all the time, you're deficient in vitamin D almost invariably. That's probably why we get sick so much in the wintertime and we get less sunlight. The last one that I want to talk about is are you starting to lose your hair? Like, are you brushing your hair in the morning and like, what, what's going on? You don't really think anything of it, but maybe now you'll start thinking something of it because you've got these other symptoms and your hair might be falling out, even just in small amounts. Well, what's going on? Well, vitamin D is responsible for really building the hair follicle. 
So it's one of the first places that a deficiency is going to show up. Because if you're deficient in vitamin D, it's going to pull vitamin D from the hair follicle and put it to more important resources, okay, like your immune system. So the hair ends up taking the brunt of the issue where it's just going to fall out because vitamin D has been reallocated. So it's a very clear indicator and an early sign. Now there's a study that was published in the journal Skin Pharmacology and Physiology. Took a look at 80 women that had hair loss and compared them to 40 controls. Okay, well when they investigated them, they found that on average, the women that had hair loss had one-fourth the levels of vitamin D compared to the women that did not have hair loss. So the point was, is when they put these groups together, they noticed, ah, there is a link. Those that have hair loss also tend to have a quarter the amount of vitamin D as those that don't. Very strong correlation there. So remember, there are probably dozens, if not even hundreds, of various little symptoms that align with low levels of vitamin D. But these are the five outliers, the ones that people notice. And if you have three, four, or all five of these, you might want to go in and see your practitioner, at least get some blood work done, or at the very least, go out and get some sunshine or take a small amount of vitamin D. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.